Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Oreo Olives Show with your host, Scala. As you know, Oreo and olives do not mix, but the abstract thought of putting two things together opens up our mind to create and talk about different topics on different levels and so forth. But as you all know, this season, during this time, we've been asked to not travel and go and visiting people during the holidays. As you know, we just got through with uh, Thanksgiving. And that is the time of year, along with Christmas and other holidays around the season, where we love to enjoy the time and being able to sit with family, talk, laugh, eat, have fun, and just see people that we haven't seen mostly all year. But at this point, we're at a time of the year where we are more than seven months into this whole coronavirus pandemic. And as you know, there were different um, pieces of news coming out about people, you know, to keep people from traveling and going to visit. Not only family, but just being out in the world in massive groups because we like to travel in. And that was a point in which some people already knew that they were we're not going to see the family. They were going to wait until next year or whatever. And then there were other people who kind of had mixed reviews in the middle. And then on the other side, we had people who didn't care and feel that this is a hoax and that people are just trying to tell them what to do. And we can go on any side that you want to go with them. We can look at it from the, um, the powers to be perspective. We can look at it from a political perspective. We can look at it just from a normal talk perspective, which that's what I'm coming to you about with right now, just talking with um, sense and logic, because that seems to work in almost any situation that we have. But you can also look at it from a conspiracy standpoint. You may have conspiracy theories and may feel that this is a hoax, this is not real, it's just the government trying to control. You. But I'm just going to use the logical point of view. The logical point of view is when it turns cold outside, we decide individually to put on our coats and jackets because we don't want to get sick. Now, the logic is if you don't dress yourself to what the weather is like outside, then you would either be too cold or you will be too hot. So in this instance, it's cold outside right now. It's in the month of November. As you can see in the background, there's no leaves on the trees. And at that point, we have to understand that yes, the media at large will start to put out the news and stories of, hey, this is the season to dress up. You see the commercials and ads and marketing on TV that shows you different types of clothes for the winter time so people mind steer and go towards that direction. When the summertime comes, you see more uh, less clothing, whether it's shorts, uh, short shirts and things of that nature. And that prompts people to dress less so that you're not burning up and you're hot outside. So let's take this same concept and apply that same concept to the coronavirus perspective. And what you would get is it's completely opposite of the examples that I just provided. With the whole coronavirus thing, you have people who honestly do not believe that it is real. They believe that no matter what anybody says, I'm not going to put on a mask, I'm not going to follow the rules, and I don't care if I get other people sick. And at that point, that's very selfish in that regard because, because of your selfishness, whether you may not get sick or not, the person that you end up going around to get sick, and it will continue to bounce from person to person to person to person. Um, just like you relate that to technology. 
you get a virus on your computer, or you get a virus on one computer in a computer network, it will go through that network and infect other computers on that same network. They will travel from computer to computer, from subnet to the networks and everything. And that costs a lot of money to get that repaired because depending on that virus, you can tear up the computer, you lose data, and so forth. And so in this same concept, this virus affects people. So some people get over it pretty quickly. Some people do not. Some people end up on ventilators. And I'm beginning to wonder if it takes more than 14 plus days to get over the symptoms. Honestly, if the world just stopped for two weeks or 14 days or more, I wonder if we would be able to get over this virus that we have. So what they're saying is they're recommending people not to travel because they do not want to continuously spread the virus even more. Now, indeed, the numbers, they say online that they are lower, but you have to also take into consideration a lot of people are not getting tested and a lot of the numbers are not being reported. Therefore, it looks as if the numbers are down, which they are not. But it's still at a point where it's extremely scary for people because now, you know, this, this time in holidays, people want to go and visit more than they want to keep each other safe. And as my grandmother said, which made very great sense, you can skip this holiday or this could be your last holiday. <laughs> and I just kind of chuckled there a bit because in a way that's kind of true, you know, um, we can enjoy next year, we can enjoy our summer next year, we can enjoy next year's holidays and enjoy being kind of going back to normal in a sense, only if we're able to follow the instructions that are provided. And you can look at it and say, well, you know, this whole, this is a whole conspiracy thing, but you also have to figure out and know that this is real. And whether you believe it or not, just simply just put on your mask and protect yourself and protect the people around you because it's very important. Let's not be selfish. Let's mask up. Let's do the proper things that we need to do. Um, if you have to travel, that's fine. Travel with your mask on as long as you're not going to be around a whole lot of people. Like right now, I'm traveling to take care of some business. But as I was driving around my neighborhood uh, during Thanksgiving holiday, I noticed there was a lot of cars parked in different neighbor's yards around the neighborhood. And when you live in the community and neighborhood or wherever you live, you know what your neighbor's vehicles look like. And you know when something is a little bit different or off. What I noticed is a lot of vehicles are from out of state. And so people are coming from different places. 